note that the two natures model is a non sequitur. In other words, it gives you uh, a non sequitur proposition. Proposition one, only God can atone for your sins. And as a matter of fact, for the sins of the whole world. But then the proposition two is God cannot die, which is scripture. So, so that does not follow. That's what that's the non sequitur. I have to remind you that this two nature model represented by my opponent uh, bred or gave birth to the God man view of the historical Jesus. And this was again, I have to remind you, this was codified, codified, made official doctrine, church doctrine, 400 plus years after our Lord Messiah was on earth, 451 AD. Actually, that's almost 500 years. So the Chalcedon Creed influenced the later so-called Athanasian Creed, which is the first in history to explicitly state a doctrine of the Trinity, that is, three persons in one nature or one substance. So that's why it's so important. The noted Anglican priest and historian of the early church, Leonard Hodgson, who was also Regis Professor of Divinity at the University of Oxford, uh, noted that the Athanasian Creed is a very instructive document for it shows that when an attempt was made to state this, the Christian faith in terms of the metaphysic of the time, all that could be done was to set down a series of contradictions and, and say that you would be damned if you did not believe them. This was not a Unitarian, non-Trinitarian Aryan. This is Leonard, Dr. Leonard Hodgson. Please check him out. The fact is that nowhere in scripture do we have a teaching of a so-called two natures of Christ. For the New Testament writers, Jesus was a man, which means a human person, period. Yet he wasn't some mere man, as many of my other opponents accuse us of. But no, he was the uniquely procreated son of God, who Paul later calls the last Adam. Now, this ties into one of the most prominent New Testament teachings that shows that the whole human person of the son suffered and died for your sins, for my sins, for all time. First John 4.10, it says, this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Romans 5.10, I already quoted, God, uh, Paul believed that the son of God died for him. And if the person of the son did not really suffer, let alone die for us, then God did not raise his son from the dead. As we know, the Christian hope is to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath, 1 Thessalonians 1.10. The inevitable implications of this two nature model would mean that atonement for sins has not been made and thus we die in our sins. So Christians would have nothing to preach about as well. And however you want to define death, the Bible says God cannot do it. 1 Timothy 1.17. As I already quoted, the only God, the eternal King, the unseen one. So I would please ask you to hear the words of Matthew and Luke, not the words of Ignatius, not the words of uh, the, 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 the popes, the early Catholic popes, but the words of Paul, the words of Matthew, the words of Luke. They believed in the one human person of the Son of God, uniquely procreated and he atoned for your sins and he really did die and suffer a horrible death.